Welcome to the Inside Rugby with Mark preview show. In this episode, I'm going to be previewing the second test match between the New Zealand All Blacks and England to be played at Eden Park this Saturday evening. G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here on Inside Rugby with Mark, welcome. It's great to have you here. We're trying to spread the fantastic game of rugby across the world. So if you are a first timer, it's wonderful to have you on board. If you are a returning viewer to the channel, welcome back. Great to have you here. And don't forget, share your comments, experience and knowledge in the comments below of this video. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the game that's happening on Saturday night between the New Zealand All Blacks and England at Eden Park, the fortress of New Zealand rugby. And uh, boy, it's going to be a fantastic game, that's for sure, I have no doubt about it. A couple of things I want to say in this video about the last game, but also looking forward to this game in terms of how I think it's going to play out. A little bit of trivia for you all to start off today's episode, and it is all about the All Blacks at Eden Park. Yes, the fortress that is Eden Park. The All Blacks haven't been beaten at Eden Park for 30 years. I'm going to ask you all now a quick question. Who was the last team? to beat the All Blacks at Eden Park. Let me know right now. And uh, I'm gonna show you on screen so you don't have time to Google it. Now the All Blacks were leading that game with just four minutes to go. And yes, a great try was scored against them. And if you haven't seen it, tap it into the old Google machine and have a look at it. It was something very, very special. But that was the last time the All Blacks were beaten at Eden Park. Hello. Now let's have a look at the two teams. And uh, not too much to report on this one. As far as the uh, English team goes, we've got two changes to the team that took on the All Blacks in the first test that was played down there in Dunedin at the Forsyth Bar Stadium. And that is Baxter's coming on to start this game in the front row. Joe Marler, of course, was injured in that first game and won't participate in this one. And then on the bench for England in the forwards, Rod comes into that position. So that's the only replacements. The rest of the team is exactly the same as it was in the first test against the All Blacks. So we'll just have a, I'll have that running at the bottom of the screen so you can check it out as we go. Now the All Blacks also, they only have one change in this particular team and that is in the back line. We're going to see Finlay Christie starting this game. TJ Perinara, of course, had that bad knee wrap in the first game. He won't be participating again in this series. And we see Finlay Christie starting this game. Cortez Ratama will come off of the bench for the All Blacks as the replacement halfback. And that's the only other change for the All Blacks in this team. So both Scott Robertson of the All Blacks and Steve Borthwick for England must have been pretty happy with their two teams when it came to their performances in that first test. And of course, there were only some very small margins in it. And reading a lot of the English comments online, a lot of people think that the All Blacks were lucky to get away with it from a scrumming point of view, that the referee should have pulled them up on uh, more occasions when it came to the scrums. Well, we'll see how that goes this weekend. One of the things I do want to share and talk about in this video is about Scott Razor Robertson. Of course, he's the new head coach of the New Zealand All Blacks after a very successful tenure with the Canterbury Crusaders over the years, winning them seven different national titles. But the thing with the Crusaders and the All Blacks, it's a very different camp, of course. And for the first time, Scott Raber Robertson is under the kind of media pressure on an international level that he's not too uh, used to or probably too comfortable with. And if you look at him giving interviews so far in his tenure as All Black coach, he's a little bit nervous and it's all new to him and that's completely understandable and you can tell by the way that Razor Robertson reacts he's not the type of guy that likes to do a lot of talking in front of the media he likes to be around his players and just getting on and doing the job he realizes it's part of his game he's got to step up and do it but I think it's going to take Razor Robertson a few matches indeed and not just this one against England at uh, at Eden Park I think it's going to take him a few games away from New Zealand to feel more and more comfortable with the pressure that's on him as the All Black head coach. I think it's quite telling at the moment. You can see it in his body language and his demeanor. And it's going to take a while for him to settle down as well. And I just wanted to raise that in the video episode today because I think it's an important part of the whole game. And uh, obviously the players will also be feeling that nervousness and energy from Razor. 
uh, more so when he's in front of the press rather than when he's around them. So I think that's an important part of the development. Razor needs to get more and more comfortable in that environment and I'm sure he will do so as time goes on. And I'm sure that win in Dunedin was a huge step for him just to take a little bit of that initial pressure off him. But I'm sure there's going to be lots more pressure on, particularly because the All Blacks haven't been beaten for so long at Eden Park this weekend. And I think the pressure has even been ratcheted up even more for Robertson and the All Blacks to win this game in Auckland in the weekend. On the other side of the coin for Steve Borthwick and the English team, I think it's a completely different story, isn't it? They come into this game with hardly any pressure on them at all. They had that great performance in Dunedin. The game, a lot of people say, was one they should have won. Well, they have another opportunity this weekend in Auckland. And boy, what an opportunity it is, because it's not an only an opportunity to tie up a test series with the All Blacks. It's also an opportunity to create history by taking the All Blacks down at Eden Park. And I think Steve Borthwick's team comes in with no pressure on them at all this weekend because a lot of the All Black fans think the All Blacks are going to step it up and go to the next level this weekend because they've had that extra week together. They've had that first game together and they're going to really come out firing this weekend. Whereas Borthwick's team, well, they're on a hiding to nothing, aren't they? They've got no pressure on them. They can come out and as Steve Borthwick said in his own words, they can play a big game. So let's have a look at the strategy this game for this game and uh, who's got to get a ride and who's got to change from what they did in Dunedin. And first of all, I think the All Blacks got it wrong in Dunedin. I think uh, Scott Robinson was pretty open about that as well. They went too wide too early and tried to play that very expansive game that we expect the All Blacks to play, but they didn't have any domination up front and in particular in the loose forwards, and they were given a very hard time by Chandler Cunningham South, Underhill, and Ben Earl. And I think the All Blacks need to win that battle, or at least be dominant in that battle, before they can start to go wide. So I think what we're gonna see from the All Blacks in this game at Eden Park on Saturday is we're gonna see them being more direct. I think we're gonna see them go up the inside channel and try and put a little pressure on the inside backs and also the loose forwards for England. And if the All Blacks are able to create that kind of pressure, then I think we're going to see them being more effective in the back line. Now, for, of course, England played so well in that first game and they rushed New Zealand into those areas and it put a lot of pressure on Damien McKenzie. And a lot of people, myself included, saying that Damien McKenzie may not be the guy for the number 10 jersey for the All Blacks. Well, I've calmed down a little bit since I said that. And I think we've got to give him another go this weekend and see how he goes because if the forwards are able to step up and give him the platform that he needs to be more on the offensive rather than being rushed and on the defensive, then it could be a different Damien McKenzie we see in this game. And he might be a little bit more liberated to be able to play the game the way that he likes to play it. But we'll have to wait and see. And a lot of the onus of that is going to come down onto the All Black forwards. So look out for that first of all. I think we're going to have to see the All Black forwards be more dominant in the loose, if they can, against this England back three, and see whether they can set up some more go forward through the inside channels. Now, I had spoken about it in my video before the first game that I thought discipline might be a very big issue in the first test. It wasn't so much of an issue, but in this game, it's going to be critical. So I think, again, with the pressure that goes into this game, and I'm putting a lot of that pressure on the All Blacks to perform, they've got to make sure that, particularly in the tackle area, that they do everything by the book and we don't end up seeing any yellows or worst red cards for the All Blacks. So penalties are also going to be key and uh, we're going to see that uh, opportunities will come up to take kicks for the goal and it'll be interesting to see whether teams do that or whether they go for a kick for touch and try and put additional pressure on that way. So look for discipline to be a big thing again on Saturday night for both teams. Now the next thing we've got to watch for I think is the kicking game on the weekend and I think that uh, Damien McKenzie didn't do a lot of kicking in the first match. Alex Mitchell did quite a few box kicks. They were actually contested very well but also the All Blacks caught those kicks very well. Particularly McKenzie dropping back to take those but also Stephen Perifetta was very good at the back for the All Blacks. So I would expect to see some more of that. I think Alex Mitchell's going to put up some high kicks. I don't know what the weather report is yet for Auckland for Saturday night. I'll check that out and let you know in another video. But for now, if we've got some water around, that could be a good decision for the English team to do. 
but look for the strategic kicking to be very important in this game and look for Damian McKenzie to have a little bit of a better game in that area than he had in the first tech test. I think the All Blacks need to go for territory in this game. They show when they're going forward they're a lot more potent and I think they played too much of that first game in the middle of the field or inside their own first half of their uh, territory. And I think they need to make sure that they're playing the game inside the English uh, half. And if they're able to do that, they're going to get more and more on the front foot. I thought all the wings in the game last weekend had a very good game, both from the English side as well as from the All Blacks. I thought Talia and Sevu Rus were very good. And uh, they're very hungry. They go looking for the ball. And I think that's something that Tommy Freeman can probably learn a little bit from Mark Talia and Sevu Rus is to get hungry and looking for the ball. I've seen a few English comments saying that Freeman maybe should come in and play in number 12 or 13 jersey. I don't think that's the answer. I think he's a very good winger. He just needs to get a little bit more engaged and looking for the ball. But on that side, I thought Freeman played very well. And Faye Wabaso, well, he's a game changer, isn't he? You know, if, he, if he's given ball, with a little bit of space, he can definitely score tries. But more importantly, he can break through the New Zealand defensive line as well and set England up on a good rush forward. So look for Wabaso to be a big player in this game in Auckland on Saturday night. Now, one of the All Blacks that might be under a little bit of pressure in this game to perform is Rico Iwani. I think that uh, his position is a little bit in jeopardy and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Proctor getting a start against Fiji when the All Blacks head over there at the end of the month to play them in San Diego. So uh, expect a big game from Rico Wani. He's playing there on his home ground in Auckland at Eden Park. I think that'll give him a little bit more motivation as well. And uh, we need to see some of his strong runs and a little bit of self-belief. He had a couple of opportunities in that first test match where he didn't put the hammer down and actually go for it. He actually passed the ball and I think it's a lack of confidence maybe that uh, yuani has got at the moment. So I'd like to see him give it a bit of a go from the back line. Stephen Perifetta I thought had a very good game for the All Blacks in the first test until he was taken off and replaced by Bowden Barrett and I think Scott Razor Robertson did that because of Barrett's experience at that time of the game wanting New Zealand to finish that game out and to close it out but Perifetta played very well he's also on his home track at Eden Park this weekend so expect him to have another good game and I think he'll be believing and growing in confidence as well by getting another start here for the All Blacks this weekend. So looking at the English locks last weekend, I thought Atoje and Martin had very good games and they outplayed Barrett and Tua Peloto definitely in the locking positions. So expect that to happen again this weekend. Expect it to be a big battle. I think Barrett and Tua Peloto are going to be better for the run together last week. I think they're going to come out and perform at a better level. But Atoje and Martin are a great locking combination for England. And England need to take advantage of that. They need to use those guys in the set piece as much as they can to win good clean ball. And also in the scrum to make sure that England have got that platform where they can compete with the All Blacks and allow the uh, English backs to get some good quality ball. So look for the locking battle to be a big one in this particular game. I was very impressed with Baxter when he came on for England last weekend and he's getting a start this weekend so it's going to be a huge game for him, a young 22 year old and I think he's going to be around for many years to come in the English jersey and I think the English have found a very very good prop in him but they've also got good experience in this back uh, in this pack to come on off the bench as well we've got the like of Cole and Coles to come on for England a lot of experience there and uh, I think that's going to be a telling point in the second half on the All Black side we saw Asafa Amur come on last week he's got a lot of uh, impact off the bench and probably like to see him get a little bit of game time but one of the big positions I'm going to be looking out for this weekend is halfback for the All Blacks. I think the All Blacks have got a little bit of a problem in this position at the moment. Aaron Smith's departure from the scene has really shown how great a player he really was. And whilst TJ Perinara played fairly well until he went off in that first test, I don't think it was up to the level that we need to have from an All Black halfback. I want to see somebody that's a little bit more dynamic. And I think we've got him this week, but he's sitting on the bench to start off with. And I think that's a good move from Scott Razor Robertson. The reason I think that's a good move is he can assess how Finlay Christie goes. As you probably know from my previous videos, I'm not a big fan of Finlay Christie. I think he's too slow. I think he slows down the All Blacks momentum and opportunities to go forward fast. 
and that's why I think Cortez Ratama is a better solution for the All Blacks and I hope to see him coming on the field with plenty of time to go so he can have that particular impact and don't forget him and McKenzie play together at the Chiefs so they've got that combination working as well and I think Razor Robertson would be silly not to try that fairly early in the game so look for that to be one of the pivotal positional changes for the All Blacks this weekend we'll assess how Finlay Christie goes in that first half and if he's not allowing the All Blacks to get on the front foot I think we're going to see a change and we're going to see Ratama come on in this game it's the back three for the All Blacks Papalihi, Finau and Adi Savia. that's where it's going to really uh, take hold for the All Blacks if they're going to get some momentum in this game Chandler Cunningham South Ben Earl and Sam Underhill are playing fantastic rugby for England and they're a different, difficult trio to break down and the All Blacks are going to have to at least get on parity with those three for them to make some significant gains and come out for a win in this game so look for that as being one of the key battles in this game on Saturday the back three from both teams now another area where the All Blacks might have some advantage on the weekend is going to be off the bench in the back so I think Bowden Barrett, Anton Leonard Brown have really got some emphasis to offer this All Black team versus Finn Smith coming on and Ollie Sleitholm and Spencer for the English team. I just think the All Blacks have got a little bit more class, a little bit more experience in those players off the bench and that can make a difference particularly in a very tight game. We saw Anton Leonard Brown come on last week with his great defensive skills and we saw Bowden Barrett come on with all that experience he has just to help the All Blacks close out that game. I'm expecting to see things a little bit differently this weekend. I think the All Blacks are going to have a little bit of a lead when we're going into that last 20 minutes. And I think those are the types of players that can really open up the game for the All Blacks. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think the All Blacks have an advantage when it comes to the backline bench. Okay, so how do I see this game going in the end? Well, I think the All Blacks are going to win this one. I think they're going to be a lot better after their run in Dunedin last weekend. Don't forget, they just had 10 days together going into that first game and Razor Robertson's first test match. There was a lot of pressure, a lot of hype, a lot of media expectation. I think having that extra week together and the opportunity to sit down and analyze that performance in Dunedin, I think it's gonna give Razor Robertson, Scott Hanson and the rest of the All Black coaching crew an opportunity to really sit down and analyze where the All Blacks need to make fundamental changes to get over top of this England team. On the other hand, this England team is a very good team. We're seeing this team building into one of the best top elite rugby teams in world rugby at the moment. And on any given day, they can upset the opposition. There's no doubt about it. So there's not gonna be taking anything too lightly here. I think the All Blacks are gonna get off to a better start in Auckland than they did in Dunedin. I'm expecting them to score more points in that first 20 minutes. And I think that's going to help them build their confidence very quickly. So I think Robertson's going to be drumming into the guys that they've got to start this game with their feet on the ground and really going for it. So I think there's going to be some big hits first up when England have got the ball. But there's also going to be some big charges up the middle of the field to start off this game. And then once the All Blacks see some opportunities there, then the ball's going to go out wide. And we're going to see what the outside backs for the New Zealand are capable of. So despite picking the All Blacks to win this game, I'm going to say if England are close again at half time, then they're going to be able to grind this one out. And it could go down to what we saw in Dunedin. It could be a one or two point thriller at the end of this game. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the All Blacks are going to have this one by 10 points. And I think they're going to show us what they're capable of doing and taking that next step in their evolution as a team coached by Razor Robertson. It's going to be a very exciting game. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think England are going to be able to bounce back? Do you think they got enough motivation out of that first test match in Dunedin and they're going to be able to put it right in Auckland? Or do you think that run for the New Zealand All Blacks is going to help them come out and be a little bit more coordinated and know exactly what they're doing and being able to execute their plans in this game at Eden Park. I'd love to. So there you go, that's my views around what I think is going to happen on the test match between the All Blacks and England on Saturday night at Eden Park. I'd love to hear your views, so why don't you drop me a comment on how you think this game's going to go. Do you agree with anything I've said in the video today? Or have you got another opinion? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and helped me grow the game of rugby across the world, now's your chance to hit the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Remember, the only reason I'm doing this channel is I'm trying to help the game of rugby grow across the world by connecting new people 
and giving people a platform who love the game to make comments and share their passion for it across the world so why don't we help each other do that that would be absolutely fantastic now i'm going to be back again soon with some more content so until then you stay safe stay well keep enjoying your rugby no matter where you are in the world and it's time to say adios from here in beautiful mexico have a wonderful day bye for now